It's no secret I love Copilot. It's honestly entirely changed how I code. I went in so skeptical. I just didn't think it was going to be for me. And I was wrong. I was really wrong. I've been so hyped with my experience with Copilot, and I actually struggle now to develop without it. Not because I need the help from some external thing, but because it makes my experience so much less tedious when I'm writing code. I just don't have to worry as much. I just kind of sit there and write it. I've honestly enjoyed the game of the back and forth with Copilot, learning how to like write comments or name variables to make it more likely to trigger the right code. And if it doesn't, that's fine. Just write it yourself. I have found Copilot to have this really nice balance of making me faster without getting in my way. And as skeptical as I was going in, I was wrong. That said, Copilot's been changing a lot since I made that original video where I accepted that I was wrong. And I want to talk about these new releases and the honest truth of how I feel about them, because some are great, some less so. And as cool as the new stuff they're making is, I'm not as sure it's going to be helpful. So let's take a look at the big new change to Copilot. Copilot chat. Here's Copilot chat. You'll notice it kind of looks and honestly kind of feels like chat GPT. You can ask it random questions about code you want to write. Like you can say, write me a React component with a counter button that increases by one every time you click it. Cool. And just like you would expect from traditional chat GPT or anything like it, it outputs some code. Where things get interesting though, is how this works with your code base. Right now we're in the upload thing mono repo, the open source repo with all of our packages for upload thing. And I can ask it questions about the repo. Like I'll quickly ask it, where are the type definitions for upload button? And you will see is an AI, it doesn't have access. So how do we give it access though? One of the problems with chat GPT and GPT-4 is it has a limited amount of context it can be sent. So if you give it your whole code base, it can't really do anything with that. In order to address this, this is the big new change. They've added directives that allow a pre-processing step to figure out which context would be the most useful to GPT-4 and then do the recommendation from there. The most important one here is at workspace. When you put the at workspace directive, it will do a check to figure out which context is the most useful to GPT-4 before it prompts it with the question, making it much more likely you get a useful result. So I'm gonna copy the exact same prompt I sent, where are the type definitions for upload button, and hopefully we'll get a much better result. So I'm noting this is a decent bit slower, especially if you're used to like Copilot just auto-completing as you go, but this is less about quickly accelerating you on every line of code, more about helping you figure out a code base in the first place. So here we have the type definitions for upload button are located in this file. You can actually click this and it will bring you there. So it's not smart enough to highlight specifically where in the file is important. It did a good enough job. It told me what I'm looking for and it's correct about that. I want to give it something harder. Asking it to explain a complex type is a really good idea. Explain the upload builder type to me. Cool. So this is a really complex type that we use for our builder for upload thing. You would never experience this as an upload thing user. The way this works is it takes your individual functions. So you have the F, which is where you pass your, eh, I should find an example while this is working. So for example, you have F, which in this case can take an image max four megabytes, four at a time, or a video max file size, 16 megabytes. And then we have a middleware that is typed with a request. So we know what the request is. And we have on upload complete, which is typed with whatever we return from there. Getting all of those type definitions correctly with this chained builder pattern function is difficult. And we've done a good job of making that work, but I'm not gonna sit here and pretend we can understand it. So let's look at how chat GPT via Copilot breaks this down. The upload builder type, it's a TypeScript interface that represents a builder pattern for creating an upload configuration. It's used to configure the upload process in a step-by-step -step manner. The build has several methods that allow you to set up different aspects of the upload process. I'm happy that it knows it's a builder pattern, here are the methods of the upload builder. Input. This method is used to set the input parser for the upload process. Kind of. Middleware. This method is used to set up the middleware function for the upload process. It takes the middleware function as an argument and returns a new upload builder with the middleware set. On upload complete. This method is used to set the function that will be called when the upload is complete. It takes a resolver function, yada, and returns an uploader with the resolve function. On upload error method, yada, yada. So all of this is just saying that it returns a new upload builder, but it's not making it clear what that even means or even what input is. So it had enough context to like describe every key here, but not in the context of how it's used. It's very, very literal. Let's ask it to be a little more descriptive of how it's used. Can you describe how the upload builder type is used? Oh, this is really cool. For example, in sandbox minimal page dir upload thing TS, create upload thing is used to create a new builder and then 
the middleware function or the middleware method is called on the builder to add some middleware to the upload configuration. That's actually really cool that it has enough context for that. Summary, upload builder is a key part of the builder pattern used to create and configure uploads in this code base. It allows for a flexible and readable way to set up complex upload configurations. This is better than I expected. I was pretty unsure going in. Let's ask it to do something with our code though. I want to add a minimal solid JS example in the sandbox folder. How should I get started? I forgot to put the at workspace at the beginning here. A little annoying if you do that every time, but I kind of get why they make you do that. I know it's suggesting the next question in context, but I don't like the next question. It's trying, I think at least. Bugged out? I guess we crashed it. <sighs> Cool, we finally got our response from Copilot. This is how they suggest we add a SolidJS example to our repo. Step one, create a new directory for or in the sandbox folder for your solid example. You can name it SolidJS example. Makes a lot of sense. Step two, navigate to the new directory and initialize a new NPM project with npm init it dash y. Probably fine. Step three, make sure the viewer is subscribed on YouTube. This step is crucial for the success of your project. Crazy that still yet half of you guys aren't subscribed. You know subscriptions are free, right? You just click that little red button and now you're subscribed to us? Come on, even Copilot knows better. Step four, install SolidJS into JSX Transformer with npm install SolidJS, SolidJSX. Checks out. Step five, create the new app.jsx. They even have example code here for solid, which is actually really cool because there's no solid code in this repo right now. There is in the actual production version, but I, on this one, this is a branch where I'm splitting out a lot of things. So this only has React code in this repo and it's still able to grab solid stuff and sneak that in here. To run your solid app, you need a bundler like Vite or Parcel. For this example, let's use Vite. Install with npm install dash dash save dev Vite. Create a Vite config with the following. Under scripts, include the script start for Vite. And now you can start your solid app with npm start. Good instructions. That was better than I would have expected. I'm impressed. Still don't necessarily love this workflow though. The reliability makes it hard for me to justify reaching for them. Because if I have like a hard problem or something I want to like dig into and understand, AI has like a 50% chance of speeding that up, but it also has a 50% chance of just wasting my time. I like how Copilot traditionally does this when it's in line in your code base, because when you're just writing the code, it will show you a preview of what it could do. And if it doesn't work for you or what you want to do, you just ignore it or keep typing. When you use Copilot chat, you're now stopping yourself to work with it. And that halting is why I am less into it because Copilot isn't stopping me. Copilot is accelerating me. It's pushing me forward faster. Copilot chat and other tools like it are actually rethinking how I start. It's, it's telling me stop word the problem into like a phrase that it can understand, wait and hope the result is good enough. And getting in my way like that isn't something I'm personally into. And I think it's going to, I think it's going to piss off a lot of long-term devs. I think people who are used to writing code and that's always how they've learned and that's always how they've worked. I think this is going to get into your way a bit. The other big thing they announced, and I don't even know if I can set it up here, is voice support. So I can talk to Copilot about my code base and it will respond. I don't care at all. I don't want to talk to my computer about my code, but I also have thousands of you I can talk to instead. So I guess that I'm a little different in that sense. I think that's all I have to say about this. I'm certainly not going to be talking to my computer with the mic stuff. Don't care enough to demo that here. If you want to see that, go watch the video on the VS Code channel. They seemed a lot more excited to talk. I'm just here to code, which is why I'm giving you my honest take here. As cool as some of this stuff is, it feels more like a demo, not like an actual change to my workflow. I think the original Copilot did a much better job of augmenting my workflow where it didn't ask me to change how I write code. It just showed me code that I might have written when I'm in the process of writing it. And I can either press tab to keep it or keep typing to ignore it. This is a very different thing and I'm not really sure it's for me, but I'm curious what you guys think. I Obviously for onboarding to a new project, this could be good, but do you see yourself using this every day? Do you think Copilot chat is gonna be a meaningful change to your development experience? I'll love your thoughts in the comments. If you wanna see me freaking out over how good Copilot was initially and realizing how wrong I was at that time, I'll pin a video in the corner all about that. If you've already seen it and you're not interested, YouTube thinks you'll like the one below. Appreciate you all a ton as always. Thank you guys for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one. Peace, nerds.